All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So we had an article that was released on the Jets website, along with this uh, sit down uh, interview with Nathaniel Hackett on the Jets YouTube channel. Of course, both will be listed down below in the description box. I highly recommend checking it out, especially I mean, I mean, normally you always love listening to the OC, the head coach, the DC of your favorite football team, right? To always just, you know, try to get a feel for the team, especially going into a season. But, you know, right now we're in the first week of July. So, you know, things are pretty dry as far as news is concerned. So, you know, whenever you have an opportunity to, you know, listen to this, the, like a half hour interview with the team's offensive coordinator, somebody who doesn't really meet with the media all that much is uh, it, it's always cool. But I wanted to go over a couple uh, answers that he had as far as what to expect for 2024 and what he's kind of prepping for. So he said, every single year you learn so many different things. We have to always be ready for a lot of changes. I, I think that was one of the biggest things last year. We faced a lot of change. When I look back on it, it was a great opportunity for a lot of the guys uh, to get some valuable experience to create more depth for this year. So I think those were a lot of good things. And, you know, I, I guess if you look at it in that sense or, you know, through that lens, like, all right, 2023 is done and over with. What are the positives? What are just like the facts of last, uh, you know, of last season? I, I guess you could make the argument, well, hey, a lot of the young guys got a lot of experience. I'm talking about, you know, Joe Tittman, uh, Xavier Gibson, Newman on the offensive line, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, right? And of course, I'm just specifically talking about offensive players here. But uh, yeah, again, I guess you could make that argument like the like the weird positive here. There is more experience coming whenever you play like, a you know, you have a full season under your belt. So um, I, I do get that from Hackett's perspective here. Let's move on. He said, as the season goes on, the healthiest teams are usually hitting their stride and doing very well. You have to always plan for that. So the more you can mix and match them uh, just for those instances is very important. But at the same time, the longer you keep the front five together, it's going to build a strong bond. So I think Hackett here is 100% spot on, right? I, and it is obvious, to be fair, right? The healthier teams, the healthiest teams late in the season are typically in a better position. In other words, the teams that have more talent on the field, the teams that have less injuries, the teams that have more depth just because your guys are healthy and not getting hurt, um, you know, of, co of course you're going to be in a better situation. And, you know, we can even just point to last season to back that uh, fact up, right? Who were the healthiest teams? The 49ers, Super Bowl team. The Rams, playoff team. We could talk about the Buffalo Bills having a fully healthy offensive line in the late parts of the year. Like, they didn't have any injuries there, I, I don't believe. Um, now, on the defense side of the football for the Bills, completely different story. I felt like guys were missing all over the place. Uh, Trey White, Matt Milano, uh, the safety position was always, like, kind of in rotation. But the point remains the same. If you are healthy... Uh, typically, you're going to be in a better position than if you're all beat up with injuries uh, in the back half of the season. The only issue that I kind of want to not necessarily push back on, because I, again, I agree with everything that Hackett is saying here in this line. But for me, the thing that my mind just instantly jumps to is how Joe Douglas operated 2023 in the early parts, right? When the Jets were experiencing injuries, uh, whether it be to Aaron Rodgers, whether it be to... Uh, the offensive line, whether it's understanding that Alan Lazard isn't really doing a whole lot, uh, Randall Cobb wasn't really doing a whole lot, Dalvin Cook wasn't really doing a whole lot. It just seemed like st like everything was totally fine, and there wasn't really that fire, that intensity, that urgency to upgrade the team in any sort of way. Uh, and we're talking pre-trade deadline here, so we don't have like you know, it's not like we got. All of our, you know, solid players got hurt in week 14 and we're just like, well, there's really nothing we can do. No, I, I literally remember everybody, Jets fans were talking from week one saying, hey, we, you know, we can use another offensive lineman. We can use a, a backup quarterback. Can we bring this guy in for a workout? Why isn't anything getting done here? And the line here from Hackett where he says, as the season goes on, the healthiest teams are usually hitting their stride and doing very well. You always have to plan for that. That is something that the New York Jets simply did not do a year ago. Right, they they had injuries, and to me at least, the way it seemed 
was Douglas threw his hands up and said, that's the year, right? We're not going to go out and make a move at the trade deadline, like a win now piece. We're not going to go add, you know, a, a solid veteran who can step into the starting lineup within a couple, uh, couple weeks. We're not going to look at upgrading the quarterback position until it just felt like it was necessary because there was just so much backlash from the media and whatnot because we were just seeing like loss after loss after loss. And... Like, I remember, again, in the early parts, we had, like, the loss against the Cowboys, the loss against the Patriots, the loss against the Chiefs, and I, I think that was right around the time that we brought in Trevor Simeon, so it kind of felt like one, once the uh, once the Jets' front office back was against the wall, like, this unit is just, they keep on losing games, now we'll go out and make a move. So, you know, from Hackett here, when he says, you know, you always have to plan for that, um, I, I doubt he was talking about last season you know, or anything like that. I don't think he was trying to make a little subtle point. Uh, but I, I do feel like going into 2024, the Jets are in a much, much better position at multiple spots in case of injury, right? Let's just say there's an issue with Hassan Reddick, right? He, you know, he's not on the field week one. Okay, we still have two first round picks as they're starting defensive ends, right? Clement, or uh, not Clement, sorry, Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald. Uh, what happens if Rodgers doesn't look, you know, if Rodgers... Uh, has something right Tyrod Taylor there uh what happens with Tyron Smith oh, we got Olu so it's not like we're down to our last available player on the depth chart it's like no we we can now promote the the uh winners of specific positional battles in camp um you know so I I think we're in a good position I I really do believe that defensive line I'm I'm still a little, you know, stopping the run. I, I still have a, a bunch of questions there. I, I just feel like we have a lot of new faces. Uh, we lost a lot of players. We've added a lot of players. I mean, we lost Quentin Jefferson, uh, John Franklin Myers, uh, who else? Al Woods, Bryce Huff. We've replaced those guys with Lecky Fotu, uh, Hassan Reddick, who else? Javon Kinlaw. Uh, we did bring back Solomon Thomas, which is a plus. But uh, yeah, I, I think... From top to bottom, maybe safety were a little thin, but every linebacker were maybe a little thin, but everywhere else I, I feel really good about. Again, QB, running back, tight end, ta really the entire offensive line, um, edge, corners, wide receiver maybe a little thin, especially if Garrett Wilson gets hurt. But, you know, you can't be a perfect team, right? But I, I, I guess the point, the message here is that we need to do everything in our power to A, keep these guys healthy, but B, in the event that somebody does get hurt, we have somebody to back them up. And if we don't, maybe we go out and make a move this go around in 2024 where there is a little bit more pressure on uh, everybody else, this entire regime. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, go Jets. Thank you.